let me tell you a little bit about this project. And we're going to be drawing, we're going to be drawing some sort of flowers, but let me tell you how this type of flowers came life or came to life into my work. And it goes back to the year of uh, 2001. Okay. Most of you, I don't know if you heard about this, but I mean, I bet you, you were like really little or I don't even know if you were born or not. So it happened in, when I was living in New York, as I said before, back in 2001, and I was doing some sort of like, I was, you know, painting and I was, ex I had a very, you know, nice exhibition and I was very happy with my life and what was going on with my life and with my exhibitions as an artist as well. So, uh, I, in, in, in December of 2000, I had a show called Celebrating Mythology in New York and, and having a show in New York and if you're an artist, that's like a big accomplishment. So from there, I thought, you know, the sky is the limit, like they said, right? Uh, something happened in New York in September, in September of 2001. And it was, it, it was called a terrorist act. It was like, you know, some planes came into a couple of towers, you know, the World Trade Center in New York, and they crashed again the towers and, and you know, and a whole mess and a whole tragedy occurred. Over 3,000 some people were dead and it was chaos in the city. So imagine me as an artist, you know, I just had a show and, and, and in my personal life, you know, seeing all this chaos, all this, all this, you know, people dying, it was like, it, I said, you know what, it's not even worth it to be an artist in this world, you know? I mean, if we're capable of doing those things to ourselves, what is the point of being an artist, you know? So what I thought was like, okay, I need to change professions right away because I'm wasting my time, you know? And I waited after the, the World, Ta World Trade Center's attacks on September the 11th, right? Like a couple of weeks to go to my studio, to go back to my studio. And then two weeks after, I went back to my studio to like throw everything away. I didn't want to, you know, be a painter anymore. It was pointless. So I told my wife, today I'm going to go and I'm going to clean up the studio. All right. In my studio, I had a lot of fabrics, lots of them, but they were like pieces, little pieces of fabric that I have left over from my show before, like laying in the floor or whatever. So when I walk into the studio, I saw all those materials and I said, hmm, I have a lot of material in here, you know, and, and I saw all those fabrics right there. And I said, I'm, 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 I'm you know, for the last time, I'm going to just paint like, like I'm going to waste all the material that I have left because I'm not going to keep painting, you know? So so I said, let, let's have some fun in all this misery. You know, let's forget about, let's try to, to see if I can forget about all this that is going on. So I grab all these little fabrics and I put them into the wall. I staple them into the wall. And I remember that one professor back when I was going to NYU for painting told me, you have to paint like if your father on the painting store and that sounds so cool but you know the reality was that my dad was not the owner of the painting store so i could never paint like my dad on the painting store but this time i could because i was going to get rid of all of my materials so what i did guys is i stapled all these little pieces of fabric into the wall and i grabbed wet paper towels and wet racks or whatever. And I went into my buckets of pain. And I'm telling you, I'm not exaggerating. I grabbed those wet paper towels and I started throwing them into the wall, you know, like, you know, a baseball, like a pitcher, like I was throwing that like the pitcher, you know, and all the stains, you know, pain and water were all over the wall. You know, it was like magical, all these colors all over the place. Don't worry. I mean, you're not going to be doing this, but we're going to be doing this 
in a, in a way that is very minimal and it's not going to stain anything that you have around. So no worries, but just bear with me for a second. So all those stains in the wall that are starting to appear magical to me started to see like kind of flowers, okay? So what I did is I went and I grabbed like a little piece of charcoal, okay? Like I had a piece of charcoal with me and, 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 and I started, you know, outlining all those things that look like flowers to me. And all of a sudden, all those things became flowers, okay? I don't know how much time I spent. I think it was the whole day I was there painting what I thought they were flowers. But the thing is that, I mean, the what is the, the logic behind all this is in every bad event, in every bad situation, there is always something good that we can do. You know, when chaos arrives, when chaos is present, pretty much what's going on right now with this COVID-19 thing, there is always something that we can learn from. There is always something that if, if, if we look the good in it, we can, you know, make something good out of it and, 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 and learn from it, you know? Not staying just on the sad part or, or, or being miserable the whole time and start looking for, for the good in it or what can we learn from it. it it's, it's a good thing too. So, so this series called From Chaos to Flowers, you know, originated like this back in 2001 in New York City in September. So we're going to draw something. We're going to draw some sort of flowers. And we're going to try to imitate this, but in a little scale and in a very clean scale, something that is not going to mess your house. So are you up for it? All right, guys, let's go over the materials that we're going to be needing for this project. First, we're going to need paper some sort of paper any any paper that you have in your house works then we're going to need a little bit of paint in my case i'm going to be using some acrylic colors you can use watercolor or you can use any 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 sort of paint that you have in your house then we're going to be needing either a pencil or a black marker. I have a little Sharpie marker in here. It's black. And I also found a little piece of charcoal, but that's okay if you don't have anything that can scratch black marks, or black lines, we'll do it, okay? Also, guys, if you have a red pencil color, it's fine, or a red pen, anything that you can do red lines will work as well. I have this crayon in here that I'm going to be using. Then we're going to need either paintbrushes or brushes. If you have a brush or if you have a paintbrush in your house, that's fine. It's, it, it's more than enough. Okay. Then we're going to need a container, any type of container we, where we can pour a little bit of water. We're going to need paper towels and last we're going to need a paper plate anything that if you don't have a paper plate anything that you can use where you can put a little bit of squeeze a little bit of painting onto it you know so we can have the colors in it so there you go guys those are the materials that we're going to be using for this project All right, guys, here we are. Let's start on this project. Lesson, guys, I'm going to be using an easel. Don't worry about it. You don't have to have an easel. You're going to do it on a table or in a flat surface on a desk or whatever. You're going to put your paper in there. And try to, if you want to be like clean, put like a, some sort of like, you know, to protect the table and you don't get any paint. You're not going to get any, but we always have to be careful when we, when we use paint. And so any sort of table or flat surface will work for you. The only reason I'm using this is just to show you 
so you can see as we go on on the process. Don't worry if you don't see my face. Try to look at my hands more than my face because I'm going to go, my face is not going to be on camera because I wanted you to focus on this, on, on the paper, okay? So you see what I told you about the plate. I just put a little bit of some colors that I had, just very small amount of color, okay? And remember that I told you when I we started with the introduction of the how do this flowers came alive into my work. I said that we were going to be throwing, that I was throwing paper, or I mean, I was throwing paint into the wall. Well, we're not going to do that in here, but we're going to do something uh, a lot cleaner and a lot that we can control. But still the same, you know, same concept. So grab your paper towel first, okay? Let's grab paper towel. Rip one paper towel, and we're gonna smush it like this, or wrinkle it, or whatever, just to make some sort of like a bowl with a paper towel, but with uneven surfaces around the paper towel, right? Okay, so this is gonna be basic. This paper towel with a uh, red, any red pen or red you know crayon that you have let's do some marks first okay let's go in the middle of the paper okay so remember just look at my hands don't worry too much about my face or anything let's do a line right in the middle of the paper across the paper so we know that that's our paper divided in half and let's do another line around here in the paper See, we have like a kind of like crossroads going on in here. A line in here, bottom of the paper, and a line in here. What am I making these lines? So I have a guide or where my composition, it's going to be my little flowers are going to be. Okay, so let's start by just using our paper towel, okay, and our water. Let's put our paper towel into the water just a little bit okay and let's grab a little bit of a color any color you know and I'm, I'm gonna start with let's see I'm gonna surprise you with some color in here so you see that the paper towel has a lot of painting here and less paint around here let's play with that and let's do a mark somewhere in the upper area of our painting so it was like in my case I was throwing painting into the wall in our case, we're just going to be marking with our wet paper towel some stains into the, into the paper. Okay? Any stains. And if little drips come off, that's perfect too, you know? So, okay. And let's say I want another stain around here in the paper. The little drips are perfect, guys. Remember what I told you about the little drip. All right, it's enough in here. I want to change the color. So grab more paper towel. All right, and, and we'll grab a little bit more, more water, you know, and you can control your water, you know. It's just a little bit, okay? Then another color, I want to go with this color. Remember, guys, basic water are primary colors, red, blue, and yellow. With red, blue, and yellow, we can make combinations of colors, right? So if you only have red, blue, and yellow, that's fine. If you have white, you use white to add up, to light up your colors too, okay? So I'm going to use a little bit of, let's see, let me get a little bit of blue in here too. Okay, you see how light I'm using the blue? Almost on like sky blue. I'm going to put a little bit more blue to give some, you know, character to that blue. This, you know, I want the other stain around here. And if it goes over the other stain, it's still very nice because the blue and the kind of like the, la the, the pink or the reddish, it turns into kind of purple, you know. Remember. When we get 
red and blue together, we get purple, right? And when we get yellow and blue, we get green. Let's keep going with our wet paper towels. Let's grab another color. Okay. Grab another color here. Okay, in this case, I'm, I'm grabbing yellow and I'm just putting it whatever you want in this part of the paper. That's why I told you to do two lines. The line in the middle, so we will know it's right in the middle of our, of our surface, and a line in the bottom. So it's kind of like where the, you know, the floor of, of the flowers is gonna be. I want a line in the middle and a line in the bottom, then I want stains with our paper. A little bit more like paper towels and I'm, you know, let me put another color. So you see how we're like making some stains in here. All right. See in here, around here somewhere. And don't worry about the drips. And if you're in the table, you're going to get less drip. But I mean, I love drips. I, you know, it's, it's one of my trademarks. So there you go, guys. We have this right now in the surface it looks kind of like wow those looks like stain to me you know yeah remember that i told you throwing things into the wall then everything started to appear like flowers to me if you think about it guys okay this in here kind of looked like flowers to me so now i'm gonna grab my marker okay let's try it a little bit because remember, it's water, guys. So I'm going to dry. I'm going to put a paper towel on top. And I'm going to dry it a little bit. Okay? So it's dry. You can even go like this. So it's dry. That paper is dry. Remember, don't use too much water. Because you don't want it like the paper to rip. But use, like I told you, a little bit of water on the paper towel. So... Let's start doing some marks around this thing. Let's see this one in here, for example. Okay. I'm going to go over here. Maybe over here. Following just the stain that I have. Okay. All right. There you go. There's the first mark. Then let's do another one around here somewhere. There you go, my second mark. So you see how kind of like shapes are starting to appear in here? There are being more like there's another interesting shape in here in the stain. I'm gonna go around it. The next one I'm gonna do up close so you can see it better. Okay, so let me bring this close to you. And I'm gonna try to do another shape, outline another shape. In here, in another, I'll line another stain, this yellow stain in here, and kind of like I have like a green one in here. Let's go a little bit over this one. Okay, so you see now all of a sudden our stains start to look like flowers and now you're going to start using your imagination okay i already outlined this right now i can kind of like add a couple of lines to this to make it more look more interesting the composition so let's just let's add a couple of lines in here in the middle we do kind of like a what i call that a number nine in here kind of Let's do a circle around this one. Another circle in here, maybe, right? Let's do another kind of number. Nine in here. Another mark in here in the middle. Always in the middle of the of the stains we can do. So 
some sort of circle or a G or an inverted G or a nine. Okay, now that we have this, let's start doing some fun stuff with it. Let's start drawing some lines like towards the bottom of the paper. Okay. All right, so remember, red line in the middle, a little line on the bottom, right around here. Paper towel, little water, little paint. Do some stains in the surface. Grab your pencil or your marker. Go around the stains. Go around the stains with a marker, with a pencil, with a piece of charcoal. In this case, we use a marker. And then do some lines. After we have that, look at that. It's starting to look like flowers, right? We're going to do some kind of like a base. Any base will work. Either a rectangle, a round thing. I'm going to do a rectangle, like kind of like a rectangle in this case. It's not even a rectangle. It has a little angle in here. Okay, in the bottom of the flowers. Okay, then notice that the I have a bunch of triangles in here. You see, with the lines that I did from the flowers, the stems of the flowers, there's a triangle in here, kind of one in here. We can have fun with these triangles in here. We can add some color to it. Why don't we grab? A little bit of our brush or paint brush or whatever okay and then let's start like grabbing that and, and adding some color into it let's I'm gonna grab this coloring here and let's do this coloring here and this coloring here kind of like a pink color like I did it three times any color guys that come to your mind don't worry too much about color combination, you know. Remember, we're from chaos. We're creating a piece, a piece that makes sense, okay? I'm going to grab a little bit of, let's grab a little bit of my dark blue in here. And I'm going to put it in here. And then some yellow. Try to put your own colors, okay? Think about colors yourself don't 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 follow me with the colors just you know think about your own colors and then mix colors do a little bit of uh, i'm going to choose a little bit of green in here you know so kind of like that base start giving some character then grab some sort of pencil or whatever and start remaking your lines in there again Okay. And look how beautiful the red lines that we use as guides, they work in the composition. That's why I love when everything shows. Don't worry too much. Oh, my red line that I did in the middle keeps showing. That's the idea. You know, that's the idea. It gives character to your work. And then for the bottom, I'm going to use a little bit of brown in here. And... Remember that I told you that I wanted to use that line, the first mark that we did. Well, that was going to be the bottom of our composition where the base goes or whatever. Okay. That's why I like to use this these brushes because I know they're thick or whatever, but they cover a lot of surface, you know? So, that's our floor in the composition, right? And then around, either you can leave it in white. I like it in white, though. Or you can give, let's see, a little, let's see, a little tiny blue or any colors, like I told you, will work. I'm going to use it obvious. I'm going to use like a pack, like a little bit of light blue in there. And 
Okay, with water, a little water. Then, with my paper towel, remember I told you a little paint with water, I will go and try to go over this. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like the, the sky, you know, or like the background. Any color would do, guys. Always leave white edges, edges around, you know, where you apply the color and around the lines that we have done. So at the end, if you want to give more, you know, character to your piece, just grab, let's say, the red color. Where's my red thing? Right here. And make those lines more visible. Okay, even the one in the middle, then your bottom line. Then you can also start using red and putting a little bit of red accent around your black marks and some of the lines. Then grab again either your Sharpie or anything black that you have. Make it more pronounced. And there you go, guys. Out of chaos, all of the sudden, we have flowers. That's why this project is called From Chaos to Flower. Well, there you go, guys. I hope you enjoy it. We, you can do as many as you want. Just remember, start with your red lines, then grab a paper with a little bit of paper towel, with a little bit of water, do your stains, then go with your either your black marker or your pencil or something black and start, you know, going around the edges and, and, and do your things, then the vase, and then just start adding lines. And all of a sudden, you have flowers. Well, I hope you like it. Do a lot of them. See how many you can do. Don't worry so much about colors. Just start popping up colors in there. And, and, and from chaos, it has to make some sort of sense for you. This is from chaos to flower. I'm Arturo Correa. Thank you for watching, guys. Bye.